Think back to our stick insects. Think of the fantastic detail with which they mimic sticks. A stick insect you could think of as being right at the top of Mount Improbable. So let's put it up, that's a lovely one, thank you. But that has somehow to have evolved from something at the bottom. And I'm going to put on the bottom something that doesn't look remotely like a stick, this brown bug. And somehow we have to imagine that there was a gradual progression all the way up the slope, all the way around the path here, from something like that to something like that. Now here's the problem. It's birds selecting insects that are propelling these animals up Mount Improbable, that are propelling evolution. And in order for the birds to have propelled the last 1% from 99% like a stick to 100% like a stick, the birds must have had astonishingly good vision. They must have been very clever in order to be fooled by, in order to need rather, the precise detail of mimicry in order to fool them. But here's the problem. Those very same birds, or relatives of them, had to have been fooled down the bottom of Mount Improbable by insects that hardly looked like sticks at all. Because it's the same birds propelling the insects from 1% like a stick to 2% like a stick that have to propel the insects all the way up the path, 20 to 21%, 99 to 100%. And say, opponents of the Darwinian theory, you can't have it both ways. Either the birds are clever enough to do that job of natural selection, or they're stupid enough to do that job of natural selection, but they can't be both. Well, you might like to think to yourself about possible solutions to that riddle. One thing you might think of is that it's not the same birds, that perhaps the birds have been evolving during the same time as the insects have been evolving. But I don't like that theory for reasons I haven't time to go into. I rather prefer to think that it's the same birds, they were just as clever at all stages of evolution, had just as good eyesight, but the seeing conditions were not always as good. Here we have a woodland floor, which has 16 insects on it. And from where you're sitting, you can probably see some of them. And that's really the point. The seeing conditions from a distance are such that you can only see some of them. Similarly, if I look out of the corner of my eye, I can now see one or two of them, but not all of them. There are, I'm going to narrow it down, narrow down the discussion to just distance, and I'd like to call for a volunteer to help me with this. Right, thank you. What's your name? Annie. Annie. Come here, Annie, please. Now, where's the pointer? Thank you, stand here. Now, tell me, can you, how many insects can you see? Just point, point to one. We like to take the, the pointer and point to it. Which, which ones can you see? Can you see any? There? What do you think that is? Butterfly. That's a yellow butterfly, right. Can you all, probably most of you can see that yellow butterfly. And from this distance, I guess you can probably see a blue beetle, a blue beetle, green beetle, perhaps that red one there. So if you were a bird from that distance, you can see quite a lot. But now come a bit closer, Annie. Can you see any more that you couldn't see before? What can you see? Point? A black beetle and a green one there. Yes. And there, there's a cockroach. I can see a cockroach there. Now, a bird from this distance could spot the cockroach, whereas a bird from that distance could spot the yellow butterfly. Now let's come in really close. Now, can you see anything more? From a bird this distance might have a chance of seeing. What about that? What do you think that is? Come away from the stand aside. Now. There, look at that. That's a leaf butterfly. And what about, look Annie, look at this. What's that? There. It's a leaf insect. There's its head. There's its body. There's a stick insect. There. Good. Thank you very much, Annie.
So I think we've easily disposed of all three of our alleged difficulties, the eye, the wing, and camouflage. 